This video offers an overview of the new features with version 1.18 of the firmware for SensorPart visors. And these are calibration, sensor web, multi shot, and some other features. For calibration, where you can measure distances and offsets in inches or millimeters, we've got three methods scaling, a point pair list for robots, and calibration plate. We'll start with calibration plate because visor is the only vision sensor in its market segment with one-click calibration. So we have these calibration plates of various sizes you can print out to scale and you want to try each one and you want to get it to fill the entire field of view. This is a really excellent one. This one's not quite as good. So you just click on the calibration tab, select the calibration plate, you choose your units and millimeters and we click the next button and click start calibration. Boom, we're done. Every one of those green crosshairs is a calibration point. And then we can test what this actual world coordinate is and what another world coordinate is to verify we really are calibrated. Next, we'll cover the simple scaling method. You can see here this caliper tool is in pixels. But we can calibrate it, go to job, calibration, simple scaling, pick the units, next. And we'll align these two dots with this short edge of our sensor that I happen to know is 20 millimeters long. And we'll type in 20 for the world distance. And we'll zoom in on these corners to more accurately locate them. And, and the more accurate they are, obviously the more accurate your scaling is. And I didn't quite get this perfect as we'll see later. That's good. We click on detector and it says 20.1. Here's a real world example of calibration. We've got two parallel lines and the camera's about a 15 degree angle. And we've got 270 to 199 pixels. That's not right. Here, after calibration, you can see that we've got 44 pixels at the bottom and in the middle and at the top of the screen. The next calibration method we'll cover is a point pair list. Again, job, calibration, click point pair list, select your units. You can see on the scrap of paper we've got six point pairs shown. And you just move the points shown on to the actual real world points. And this is for robot pick and place applications. If you've got six point pair lists on a conveyor like this, you can manipulate the robot to the exact point and then type in that corresponding point in the visor. Next, we need to align visor coordinates with robot coordinates. We're using the contour tool to find this unique shape on the top of this part. And you can see the visor plus X is to the right. And the center line we're going to find and send to the robots is up at the top of the part. But the robot really wants to grip based on the center right there. So we got to add this offset. And we'll move that arrow from our target down to the middle of the part where we want. And you can see this is visor plus X to the right. And we'll rotate it up so that the plus X matches the robot. SensorWeb is our name for the web server built into the visor. To enable this, you just go to the Output Setup and click on the Interfaces tab. And row 7 says Sense of Web. You can enable it. There's Sense of Web. And now you're ready to monitor the visor with any HTML5 compliant browser. Next, we'll take a look at Sense of Web in action. This is a web browser. You can see the results, the st statistics. You can monitor what jobs are running and which one's active. You can see the detector results and the scores. Next, we'll show SensorWeb in operation on various operating systems, all with HTML5 browsers. On the left, we've got Windows. On the right, we've got Linux. And the cell phone is Android connected to a wireless hub. We've got a more in-depth video on SensorWeb. There's a link to it in the comments below. Next, we have another feature unique to SensorPart in the vision sensor market. It's called Multi-Shot. And what it does is it takes four different pictures using four different lights. There's 
four light segments on the camera and you can fire each in turn, take four pictures and put them together in one composite image. And for larger objects we have this multi-shot light array with the north, south, east, west, the four individual lights. Here's an example. We want to read the brand label on this USB memory stick but there's markings on it rendering it nearly impossible. But this is a multi-shot image. You can clearly see the brand name. To recap, multi-shot takes four pictures with lights from four different directions. This shows north, south, east, west. You can see the shadows. It takes those four images and combines it into this composite image. And you can kind of see why it's called 2.5D. It's got some height information in the image. On the right, here's an unreadable dot peen image. On the left, you've got the multi-shot image. We can read it every time. This is the worst possible scenario. A scratch on a business card, black on black. But on the right with multi-shot, you can see it. Here's a credit card. On the left, you've got various images on the back, but you can still do an OCR with multi-shot as seen on the right. And again, here we have a bead of glue, easily visible with multi-shot. This table lists some good applications for multi-shot. One nice feature is being able to lock your free shape edits on the pattern and contour detectors. There's a little padlock below, you click on it, and when you move your region of interest, you no longer wipe out your shading. When you have a lot of detectors, things can get kind of cluttered. A lot of people know about this, where you can only display one selected detector. If I click on one, two, three, you only see the selected detector. That's kind of nice. And we've got a new feature for runtime where it only displays the failed detectors. That's this red one right next to it. When you click on this, it only displays the bad detectors. Just a quick review of archiving image options. Under Output, Image Transmission, you can send images to Senso View running on a computer. You can store 10 of them on the Visor Image Recorder or you can archive them to a PC using FTP or SMB, which is Windows file sharing. The new feature is you can customize your expression for the file name. You can make it the date, the day, the hour, the minute, the second, and so on. 